Hello everyone and welcome back. With Polaris Lance still trending for the most used weapon in game currently, I want to share another build based around it that not many people have actually created. The Aeon Souls have had a few reworks to make them better, and except for the one main perk, the rest have been vastly improved on to play a more pivotal role. One example of this is the Sector Force, which now allows you to play a more supportive and aggressive role. That, oddly enough, no one actually have covered until now. A 20% debuff, non-stop radiant buff for you and your team, 33.3% ability regen for our teammates, a fast ability energy for us, an easy to access scorch plus ignition mechanic, is the tip of the iceberg when looking at this build. So let's take another look at this version 2 build we did many moons back. To start, you're going to want to have touch of flames so that fusion grenades can explode twice. Then you want heat rises where you can use your weapons and abilities while gliding in the air. While airborne and have heat rises active, getting a kill will grant you melee energy. The warlock's aspect section don't offer a lot to the user until you hit the fragment section. So for this area here, don't worry too much about what you choose, just focus on the fragments. For fragments, we have Ember of Ashes where you apply more scorched targets. Ember of Searing where defeating scorched targets grants melee energy and creates fire sprites. Ember of Torches where power melee attacks against targets makes you an allied radiant. And Ember of Benevolence where upon healing or applying radiant to allies, you get a 400% ability buff for melee, grenades and class ability for 6 seconds. Applying Radiant and Healing is going to be very important for us for not only allowing us to support our team, but also supporting ourselves when triggering our key exotics and abilities. With how I have set this up, you should be able to make use of your melee more often than your grenades, even when at tier 3 for example. This is good as it will allow us to retain the Radiant effect for longer, but also make it easier to trigger our Aeon Gloves effects for the mean run. I highly recommend you follow what is shown, as it can make doing the Cosmodrome background GM a absolute breeze. For the mods and stats, it's going to be recommended you focus on resilience and discipline, with strength being the last as we will have an alternative way to fix it. Resilience at tier 10 will grant us a 30% damage reduction, which will ultimately allow us to survive one shot hits much more often. This will also affect our well of radius duration as well, as with a higher threshold to it, it will survive for example multiple booming nights from a top of you. Discipline at tier 10 will grant us a 37 second grenade cooldown when using fusion grenades. As this will be the key stat that will benefit us the most, it will be important to expand this area more with additional mods. Grenade Kickstart will grant us a 34.4% energy on 4 charges applied, which will be enough as the current cooldown rate is quite high. If you use another grenade type that has a base of say 2 minutes 1 seconds, then applying distribution, bomber and absolution mods will be required to help expertise's effects. Our strength is at tier 3 for a 1 minute 52 second cooldown, which is extremely high, but easily rectifiable. Having Ember of Searing and Heat Rises are the two main subclass traits that can help reduce this cooldown rate of the stats, without the need of additional mods or even perks. However, as this stat will be used in conjunction with our grenade stat, it will be important to provide any leftover mod slots to this one stat alone. Momentum Transfer Mod x2 will grant a 17% melee energy return via grenade hits, and then applying the Outreach Mod will grant us a 12% melee regen via orbs collected. These here from testing will be enough to push the stat from tier 3 to a rough tier 7 to 8 when in gameplay action. It really does not need a big stat push like last time we created it, as those fragments and aspects alone will be doing the heavy lifting. This next section covers the additional mods applied. Charge up will grant us an extra armor charge, while stacks and stacks will allow our charger collected to go from 1 to 2 instead. Next, having the harmonic siphon with Reaper and powerful attraction mod will allow us to create orbs of power as we play and also make it easier to collect them. Lastly, having Ashes to Assets will expand our super energy recovery rate much faster, while Reserves and Scavenger mods will help with gathering heavy ammo as we play. Now lastly, the weapons being used is the Polaris Lance, which can stun both barrier and stoppables for this season, via the seasonal mods. This is ideal, as it covers the key requirements for activating Aeon Sword's effect, and with much more ease this time. With the ability to pop Scort and Ignitions onto targets, the Aeon Sword's mark effect for 20% debuff is actually going to make this one weapon an absolute monster in the right playlist. You can use other weapons as well that enhance this position damage done, 
But ultimately, Pulavis is going to be the best choice to pick since it's highly underused and will most likely get dropped once the season does end. From here, I then have the Apex Predator with Vorpal and Reconstruction, which is perfectly used against bosses and highly effective at taking out key priority targets there and then, such as mini bosses, tormentors, and champions. Although it's not on screen for some odd bug reasoning, just imagine it's there in its all glory. So the conclusion. We covered this build back around July last year, where we discussed this design and overall action in game, and we came to a conclusion that although it utilizes Aeon Soul's other choices, it wouldn't be enough to sway players to actually use them more often, simply because they weren't meta at the time. I would say now this is the polar opposite with thanks to the season seasonal mods and huge popularity of Polaris Lance put in play. With Polaris Lance now being viable for this season with thanks to the Kindling Trigger, Flint Striker and Revitalizer Blast, the build feels more at home as to where it can excel the most in and I've given this a good test just to see where it comes up in endgame. With a few adjustments made to the base build such as fixing the key stats and swapping around personal mods, the build covers a lot more ground compared to what my build did before, which I found made the previous build mine much more weaker while in action. I swapped out the font mods for the kickstart mods instead so I can garner more energy faster instead of casually waiting for it to come back over time. At the same time, I focused more on making sure my media option wasn't made the biggest priority, but did receive enough energy back to it to warrant its high usage. Small things like that have amplified the build to hit harder and coordinate well with the rest of the build and players, while also not dipping too far out of the realm of the supportive feature. When it comes to the support of nature of the set, you have one of agents that provide healing and damage buff that will activate Ember of Benevolence effect of giving us a boost to ability energy. As well as having the standard healing well as well, Aeon Soul, and more specifically Sector Force in our case, allows teammates not using Aeon Soul to get a 33.3% grenade and melee energy regen per 3 seconds of activating the main trait. At the same time, marking the lead on mini bosses via position and hit will debuff the target by 20% for 30 seconds. Interestingly, I had a comment from a viewer state that the revitalizing blast gives a 15% extra damage via solar ability and does stack. So if you combine with Agent, Revitalizing Blast, and Sector Force, you can get a 72% damage buff increased by your team, while we ultimately get a 43% buff. With how easy it is to proc everything in hand, this makes the build a perfect turtle build with huge firepower that doesn't even need a heavy weapon to support it. With this, you can consistently buff teammates to have more damage and fast ability energy without the need of an exotic boost in effect, as long as you're the main primer when dealing with the champions and mini bosses. The last time we did this, I did say would this build become meta over time, and although back then I did say no because of reasons, with the many changes applied in the season alone to allow this sort of setup to become available, I can see this becoming popular over time, but only for this season alone. If the seasonal mods were not here, then I could see this quietly falling off like last time. But right now, not only will you be using the two underused exotics, but you also bring awareness to the effectiveness of Aeon Soul's force and other sects as well. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like on the sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and also have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.